Hi guys, this is Diana. Welcome back to my cave. This is Creativity Inc. And today I wanted to show you guys my new uh, acquired uh, treasure for the weekend. I got this at the Facebook Marketplace. I so love, I've been wanting one of these so bad. I want to put it by my old typewriter. And it so happens I found this one at the flea market as well. It's, this one's the heavy one. The really nice, like sturdy, it's like almost metal, I think it is. It's a really nice phone. Um, for today's video, I wanted to uh, share this nice drawing that I have as part of the project that I'm working on today. And while I draw this, I just wanted to say thank you guys for uh, coming again to my channel, subscribing. It uh, supports me and it supports the idea of keep on pushing forward with new ideas, you know, staying up at night and <laughs> working on idea and, you know, improving it and making it better in my head. And it just makes it all worth it. I, you know, I've gotten to know a lot of good, amazing, tar uh, talented artists out there and amazing people all over the world. And I'm just so excited that you're here today. I'm excited that, um, that you will get to, we get to share this time and space. Uh, thank you for um, liking my videos. They do uh, help other people know that I'm here and it helps my channel grow. And I just uh, hope that you guys are all safe out there. And um, I just, I'm glad you're here. <laughs> thank you guys again. Anyway, so I, my theme of the book today is mushrooms and ferns. And it's kind of weird, but I like how it looks together. It sounds, it sounds weird. But, you know, when we look in the forest, the underground is full of ferns and mushrooms. So, you know, and I've seen some drawings out there, some art out there, and I kind of like the aesthetic of it. Um, I wasn't too sure uh, how to draw mushrooms or even how they look like. I kind of got some references here and there. But at the end of the day, I think I just made mushrooms and they were like, I don't think they were like correctly um, the way they should have been. I think at some point I started making them up. <laughs> but anyways, it looked like mushrooms, right? I think that's the whole um, idea. Anyway, so I drew some mushrooms and some ferns. I painted it with acrylic paints, um, just those 99 cent acrylic paints. And after I drew it, as you guys can see, I printed, I scanned it. I didn't scan it, I took a picture of it, sorry. I Then I printed it on canvas. Um, the whole point, oh, and after that I'm cutting it out. The whole point of this is because you see sometimes we use books. And sometimes the spine is cracking off or it's kind of separating and it's like what holds your book together. So, and sometimes we tend to be like really junky in the way we junk. Like, and by what I mean is like we stuff them with a lot of stuff. So we want, you know, we want to have the ability and the flexibility of playing without having to worry about the spine breaking off. And since we do use, well, I know I do, and I've seen a lot of people use, um, old books so i feel like this is a um for me it was important to do to support the spine but in this case i didn't want to support it with leather so i thought about this idea so you know i feel like sometimes we put a lot of effort in decorating the front of the book but when we put the book away we don't get to really enjoy our art and really enjoy how that book looks like so i thought about why don't we do spine art you know we do have a lot of beautiful spines out there thick spines and i think the bigger the better and it, you know i feel like it's like both ways because the bigger the better we can fit more stuff in there and at the same time it gives them more room to play and not necessarily on paper we can do like i don't know ephemera and um those specimen little folders and i mean i just love all that and so i think that uh chunky spines gives us that flexibility of play. So as you can see in the image, I did kind of started hinting the, the idea of a frame that goes along the book. So in my idea, I thought that maybe, um, you know, we all have different sizes of books. So if one day I get to, you know, put this up, uh, image up on Etsy so you guys can download it, I can, I can show you how, um, in this way I can show you how we can, uh, or you can adjust or modify the spine size. So for example, if I have the art uh, in the center and then you wanna frame 
the spine up and down. So it's kind of like double reinforcement because you get that strip of canvas um, that that frames it. It frames the, um, the, the spine, but at the same time, you also get to decorate it. And I like that I can use this canvas. I have the flexibility of canvas because it's the whole point to reinforce the canvas to, I mean, not the canvas, the spine to make it stronger so that it lasts for a long, long time. Especially if you tend to do like a scrapbook because I like to put pictures in my journals. Um, I know I haven't shown you guys, but um, since I am, I, I began this, my journey with <laughs> scrapbooking. So I am planning on eventually start using my pictures, especially of my kids. I have a, a crazy five-year-old little girl. She's just, she just amazes me all the time. So I'm keeping a journal of the things that like make me laugh or um, like a milestone in her life. And so I want to journal it and I, I have some pictures. So I want to make a, like some kind of um, journal. Her name is Dijolette and I'm going to call it like Dijolette's life or I don't know, something funny and crazy, but I just want to, you know, do that. So I want to be able to put pictures in it. I know if I use an old book, um, I don't know if I'll have that, if it supports the weight. I know I've made some before and I've had to reinforce them with wood because the, it, um, the spine gets to be wonky if I don't. So what I'm going to show you here now is how I'm going to continue on that little frame that I had that it was on the picture. Now, if I would have planned this better, I think I could have just uh, not cut my canvas strip when it came out of the printer so short. And I, I meant to do it. It's just, you know, I'm in the middle of everything. And so when you have everything in mind, you don't do nothing like you're not focused in one item. So things do happen. Like in this case, I'm like mostly off camera. <laughs> it is what it is. Um, I know you girls out there know what I mean. I know that there's uh, a lot of people out there that nowadays is, is like, you know, a lot of us are like doing homeschooling and a lot of us doing more or different things the way we were before. And so with all those things in mind, uh, yeah, let me breathe. <laughs> So I'm I'm bringing out the, um, what I did is I cut out the frame that it had, the little frame that the image had, because I did put a little bit of um, frame on the image. So I cut what it had out and then I just repainted it again because um, I would have left the the half painted um, um, br um, frame that it had, but I didn't, the, my canvas that it was on or the, print wasn't long enough so I had to kind of do something else so I cut what it had and then I just made it so as if it was like a two-piece kind of thing like a 3d so um if you guys do me a favor just think that I planned this all along and so like you know the movie says there's not a wave boys and so um this is me trying to replicate that little frame that I had done in the past and I'm trying to keep in that same theme that the mushrooms were painted on. And that's coffee water. So in case you guys are wondering, I'm grabbing coffee water and a little bit of those colors that I had before. And I'm just going to like haphazardly uh, slap it on there so that it, um, it, it, it does different colors, not just one color. Once I'm done um, doing my frame or my spine, I don't know, spine frame. I'm gonna attach it with my silicone and I'm gonna attach, um, make sure that when you do this, um, I you put the silicone in there on the on the cut really well because at the end of the day, this is to reinforce that, um, that crack. This crack at some ends, at some points, it went all the way through. So that's why for me it was important to, that's why I thought about this because I really wanted to use this book. I like the size of it and I wanted to save it. And so I, you know, I know I did leather before on my previous video. I used a, a collar, a piece of a jacket. Uh, actually, it was a collar of a jacket, leather jacket. And so I thought it looked cute, but um, I feel like I wanted to do something different. And so in this case, I'm using canvas and I have the 
privilege of having a big plotter here where I can uh, print on canvas. We have those big rolls. They're like 100 yard rolls and they're um, five feet wide by 100 yards. So anyway, so I'm putting them on, I'm gluing it on. And okay, so I'm gonna give you guys a trick that I learned. And you know, you learn things the hard way, unfortunately. So in this one way, is that I have to, when you glue the edges, keep in mind that canvas, like any other material, I think, um, if you let it dry flat, when you want to close it, it's going to be hard because they, you know, canvas is not as stretchy as leather, per se. It's a little stronger, in, in my opinion, um, because it's, well, in my case, because especially because this canvas is a little thicker than, like, for example, you know, regular jeans. This canvas that I use is uh, like an artist canvas, is artist quality canvas. So, um, and it's primed. It's a specialty primed canvas that allows us to print on, on it, art on it. We print my husband's art. So it's a little thicker and higher quality than a regular canvas. So uh, it's going to hold on strong, but at the same time is not as flexible as a um, leather would be. So um, the tip is when you dry it, don't dry it closed and don't dry it open. So what I did is I dried it three quarters open. I think that's what it would be considered. But so, yeah, so I, I would leave it in between like two paintings and I leave it semi open, uh, facing up, um, put image image up so that it's a little hard to close and it's a little hard to open, but I can do both things without it look, looking chunky or ripping or breaking anything apart. And, and it, it worked. Uh, in the past I have done um, some kind of spine canvas and it it was it, when i when i uh, dried it closed when you open it it's it was bulky and chunky and it wouldn't let you open it right so it wasn't wasn't feeling like a book it wasn't in, enjoyable you know because you want to when you go back to it and junk on it and like journal on it it um you want it to be enjoyable playful you know so if you have a stiff book it's not going to really work so what I did is I opened and closed it and, and to see to see that the glue jiggled or like jiggled or squeezed its way to all the crevices and crannies and I would uh, pull it back and put some more glue in there. And I find that this is um, important because if you leave like pockets where you didn't put glue, it leaves a bubble like um, sort of like when you're putting a like a sticker on a or like a vinyl sticker on like glass at least the same kind of bubble like that so um what i did in my case that it seemed to work is like i worked the glue into the canvas and the spine and that that way like when it opens and closes you don't you have that little bit of uh like wrinkly but no bubbles and it looks kind of cute and i'm very curious to see how it weathers because you know i've put it on before but I, i'm very curious as to see how it weathers Anyways, as for the inside binding, I'm going to use, uh, you know what, before the video I thought about like, okay, I need to look up the name of these things, but now I'm like editing time, Diana, in the middle of the night, and I'm like, I didn't look it up, but these little file, is it file holders? <sighs> Man, okay, I think it's called like, Finder file folder, I mean, um, binder folder. I don't know, but I got a box of them for like a dollar or something, uh, at the Walmart. And no, actually, it was given to me. Why am I lying? Okay, me, I got these for free. So, but I seen a lot of people use them on different junk journals, and um, I seen them use on legal finders, legal folders. Sorry. So. I'm using them uh, to put it on the spine. So this strip is that text text craft or text uh, paper. It's that paper that doesn't rip, craft paper sort of. So what I'm doing is I'm gonna put a inside uh, spine, but I'm gonna use um I'm going to 
glue the inside or the bottom part. Uh, what is it? What would this be called? The U part? Because it looks like a U. But I'm just being um, elementary here. Um, so that part is going to be in the inside of the spines. And so all you'll see is that little fork sticking out. And you're able to play with the uh, with, uh, signatures. You know how I like playing with the signatures, being able to have that flexibility of um, adding, subtracting, and, you know, taking it out and, and playing with it. And, you know, for me, it's important. So uh, for me, finding a new way of having that done is important. I've never seen it done before. I don't know if anybody else out there has done this or seen it before. It'd be interesting to see how other people do it if other people have done it. So um, to me, it was easy because I had a bunch of them. And the, this book called for it because it was um, thick enough. I did another book uh, last week that you guys haven't seen. I will eventually show you guys. But in that book that I just did, I did two on them. And it worked out fine, but it's kind of boring to have just two signatures. not boring because it had other stuff in, in that other book. But um, to me, like just to having two signatures and a thick book like this is like, okay, all that in a bag of chips for nothing. So I wanted to, um, well, on that one, I put other stuff so it wouldn't be, I wouldn't feel like it was empty. In this one, I was able to squeeze it in a third. A third uh, signature and I pause a lot when I say signatures because I keep on wanting to call them magazines I don't know why in my head these resemble magazines that you would put in a book um, I don't know something keeps on telling me that it's a magazine <laughs> it's not it's a signature but anyways so what I did is I measured and I cut and I did that for my three signatures that I'm planning on putting in here and my papers all uh hand is it coffee dyed and then double dipped paper that double dip that I do with black water um acrylic paint and another notebook that I had there. So these are all uh papers that I make my own my own self. <laughs> Myself, you guys know what I mean, right? So um what I did is to reinforce the center because we just literally cut into it. I cut another strip of that craft um, paper. Is it craft text or tech textile? I don't know. Um, but I have a roll of it. I don't know the name of it. I just know I've heard other people. I got it at a yard sale one time, and so it it comes in a row. I don't. I've heard other people calling it um, by that. Uh, but at the end of the day, I'm not 100% sure that's the name of it. Um, so what I did is to reinforce my my paper, uh, I, I used that because I felt like it would cut the, the little metal piece. I feel, I feel like because you're folding the paper so much into it, I feel like it would eventually cut. Oh my gosh, look at that glare, people. Divert your eyes. Um, I should have put warning. Wear your sunglasses during this video. Anyways, so um, I put that paper. So it, <laughs> so sorry. <laughs> what that glare? It's blinding me. <laughs> Anywho, um, it felt like it was gonna cut the paper because they're a little bit sharp. So I felt like every time you flip the paper or something, it was gonna cut your your paper or I don't know uh, me being Diana so I just reinforced it it was hard because it um it's pretty thick so when you're folding the paper I um, you have to train your paper to go where you want it to go so I have enough space for the other signatures and now this is okay this was interesting to figure out this is the tip of, of uh, one of those piano rolls um, and so what I did is I just folded the tip in. And voila, I did an envelope. Oh, like my daughter says, like, you know, those angelic music. I thought it was so cool. Um, I don't know. When I discover something, um, I make it like, oh, I'm excited. But, 
sometimes I'm like, I've seen that other people have done it. And I'm like, oh, man. But at the same time, it's like, I like, I feel like I air wink the other person because, like, I feel like great minds think alike. <laughs> I don't know. Me being crazy. I talk to myself too much. And so I thought it was cool that it made that perfect angle for a pocket. So I used that as my center paper because I am planning to make pockets out of these. And I did the same thing. I Oh, no, I didn't. Ooh, look at me being a rebel. I, I think I didn't reinforce it because the paper is feels waxy. It feels like strongish. I don't know if you know what I mean. Or I think I didn't do it because I didn't want... I um. Maybe I wasn't like um, doing that because of the thickness of uh, that it is in the middle. Is um, it's like kind of in the middle. <laughs> well, it's kind of like gonna be was hard to put. If you guys know what I mean, it was gonna be hard to fold into. But um, in any case, you know, it. Now that I'm thinking about it, I probably didn't do a hole punch because I don't have that. Uh, oh no, you know what? I do have that. No, I don't have it. One of those hole punchers that does like the two dots for this. I do have it, but it wouldn't it wouldn't fit all the way to the middle of the page. But if you have a hole puncher that hole punches the center, I think it looks cute. I mean, you probably end up cutting it up, but, you know, it wouldn't be a little cut in your signature. But look, see how cute they look? They look amazing. And I really, really like it. I feel like it's so easy um, to do, but... Um, I feel like it was, you know, every signature had like four or five pieces of paper and it had this big old gap in the center. So, um, I end up doing something else. I end up doing a journal in a journal within a journal. Look, in this case, I, I didn't want to struggle that much. I wanted to be, make it be a little bit more flexible. So I ended up like, um, wrinkling it up so that it becomes a little bit more flexible um it kind of did work because it was more pliable when i was when i went back to train it so that it folds where i want it to fold in the signature but um at the end of the day it's just it's a thick material and so um there what it means is just gonna last you a long time but at the same time it's like gonna last you a long time <laughs> it's gonna be hard you know so I like how it looks. I like the aesthetic that it that it happens between both signatures because you don't have a separation. And so I kind of liked it. So look, it's looking pretty cool. See how it kind of bunches a little bit? So um but I'm okay with it because I don't I don't look at it as when I do this. I look at it when it when it um when it's folded and inside the um, the shelf, you know. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to put a little bit of um, the high gloss gel so that it doesn't wear off. Well, I mean, I want it to wear off, but at the same time, I don't want the paint to dim as fast as um, I would like it to be. Not that it will dim, dim because, like I said, this is artistic canvas. But um, and so it's made to to make the colors long last long and. It's like made specifically for art to to stand out and be durable. But at the same time, it's not meant to be played with or um, be pushed around in a spine like it is. So I wanted to protect it and I'm using that gel, high gloss gel. Now you could have used matte or um, I don't know, other things, but I used um, the high gloss gel and coffee water it gives it that uh, anti-glaze kind of feel to it because it's not um 100 clear it gives it like a very dim very very dim but visible brownish look so what i did is i'm trying to fold the canvas into that crevice so at least it looks like a like a clean crevice cut anyways i found this little mat at the 99 cent store and i thought it'd be fun if i make a little book out of it now, it might be too thick for some, per se, but for me, I, I really enjoyed it. It was like a mossy um, mat, and it was it was fun. So, But because the moss tends to be coming out all the time and tends to be like pieces of it keeps on falling out, 
what I did is I um I grabbed some of that gel. This one's matte. So I did some of that matte gel and I um I diluted it with coffee water and I put it all over the the little folder. And I grabbed the leftovers and I just sprayed it on a piece of canvas so that um it I have that brush with a little bit of just water and uh coffee so that I I wanted to try and see how it looked on the canvas. I saw a friend of mine. Um she she um coffee dyed them. And so I just wanted to put a little bit of that on one of mine too. And so um by going to the inside I tried those little pieces of canvas and they weren't looking good for me. So I grabbed another piece of ephemera that I printed on canvas and I used that as the inside cover of my uh, moss cover. Did that make sense? Yeah. So I grabbed my silicone again and I'm um, um, just pouring a lot of it out. Both of these materials are porous, so they should glue really good together. But at the same time, you you need to have a lot of glue because um, it's absorbed by the materials quite often. So it so happened that the image is exactly the size of the moss. I promise you guys, I pinky promise I didn't plan this at all. Well, I should tell you, I should have told you I did plan it, huh? So I look like one of those professional YouTubers that like look like they got it all together. But I can't lie, people. And so, yes, I didn't plan it. But it's so cool, huh? that a piece of ephemera that I printed on um, canvas it fit exactly and um, what I did is I glued it first then I cut it because you know that theory of measure twice cut once definitely applies to me because I I always end up you know doing my odd sizes so um, I, what I did is I went back again because I saw a lot of whiteness you guys can see a lot of whiteness of the canvas and I did it now I'm doing it to cover the whiteness of the canvas not per not for the not to glue down anything it's just to cover those colors or that pieces that were seeping through and showing the back of the canvas the whiteness of the canvas and so I did a lot uh, a little bit more brownish but now it looked a little brownish darkish and so what I did is I'm going back with a lighter green it's like a lime green and Kind of dry brushing it on top of the um, the leaves just to bring back some life into my grass because it looked like it was dying. It had some kind of disease. It had not been watered for like a week. So I'm bringing some life into it, and I'm just gonna put a little bit here and there to bring um to bring it back to life. And once I dried it, I moved to the inside of the canvas, the inside of the notebook. I grabbed some of that leftover brown acrylic watered down something brownish and I just went around the canvas and it weathered it a little bit. I know that you guys call it aging, but isn't it weathering? Is it weathering or aging? I don't know. Is it the same thing? Does it matter? But one of those. I'm weathering it in the inside, but these little pieces of canvases don't seem to fit in there either and remember this little piece where i kind of like cleaned my brush on i kind of looked at it right now and it um it called me you know it said diana you gonna leave me here well that's not what it said but it did say it so i decided i was gonna go back and i painted a mushroom and this is how this is how i did my other ones it's just my other mushrooms that i the spine art mushrooms I did it on um, paper. This one's on canvas. And I just decided to do a little one here. I think I at first, when I first did it, I feel, okay, so I'm, this is going to be the little cover. I'm going to do a little mushroom for the cover of my um, mossy inner book thingy-majingy. But, um, well, I guess you know, guys, well, no. I don't like to ruin surprises, like tell you, well, it's not going to work. And you'll be like, oh, man. Like, you know, like telling you guys the the ending of a movie or like telling you what's going to happen next. So I don't, I like waiting until you guys are seeing it so I, so that I'm talking about it then. So I don't like telling you guys, but 
I think you guys are going to find out, right? Or is it like, tell me, I need to know. Because I do this a lot. I go through this question a lot, quite a bit when I'm editing, like in future Diana. Do I say what's going to happen before it happens or do I not? That is the question. So please, please leave me a comment down below um, and let me know if you feel like I should tell you what's going to happen next. But in this case, I am going to be a rebel and I am going to tell you it's not going to work out. So um, I find a new way for it and I kind of like the other way the other place where I put it, where I end up putting it better. I mean, obviously, right? I guess. I don't know. But it doesn't work out for the mini journal. But here's me drawing yet another mushroom. After I was done painting it, I, what I did is I framed it negatively wise. So what it means is that I did a frame. Uh, under the mushroom, but in a cutout kind of way. I don't know. That's what that's what that's how it works in my brain anyway, so in, See how it didn't look good. So um, Because the book is ferns so and I have this little piece of canvas and a frame I put I buy those uh, frames wooden frames at um, Hobby Lobby and because they're simple I I find that they need texture. So what I do is in my spare time not that I have it that often but or when I have leftover um, material or leftover pl plaster and stuff I grab these little frames and I'll put that plaster on that and then you know leave it like that so when I'm ready to paint it in this case that golden that I used on that frame on the outside um, and it's all watered down just water and that gold and um, it has that texture, so it doesn't look like it's a piece of wood. It looks like, I don't know, something other than just a flat piece of paper. And, I mean, piece of frame. So, and I just paint it and paint it that color that I want because it's a, it's the, I think it's just a glue and, um, and that Elmer's glue that I use and plaster. Now, this is something else I print, and I'm, this is, well, this will eventually be uh, available on my Etsy store. There's going to be um, words and phrases in um, pieces of canvas. And my whole idea is that if I offer it on a piece of uh, canvas, that you guys can cut it however size you want it. Sometimes, you know, we want the words nice and tight. But sometimes we want a piece of, um, piece of it extra so that we can do what I'm about to do which is to make a hole on the end of it and attach it as sort of like a banner or like a name to wherever it is we're doing. So um, because it's canvas, it gives you that flexibility of either gluing it down or making it a banner and it would look good in that way, you know, because if I did like chipboard, which is like thicker, I think it looks still good, but um, it I feel like it might, it might be too bulky sometimes for the eyelids and sometimes it, it, it Aesthetically wise, it just needs to be a little thinner than the chipboard. That's why I started thinking about making them out of canvas because canvas has a texture. And you know, guys, I'm all about the texture. And it also is easy to make um, weather because of the of the flexibility that, it, you know, you could also rip the, the edges with one of those, uh, with the blade or with your scissors. You can um, distress the edges and uh, make it look really weathered uh, and I like that about about this canvas I like that the flexibility of it is kind of endless and because it's artistic um, canvas that texture really picks up on the on the paint that whatever you're going to do and um, the words are not going to come out they they're not water water based uh, paint on the words so you can use any I don't think I would use ink I mean uh, alcohol ink on these although I haven't tried it but the reason why I wouldn't do it is not because of the ink but it's because of the uh, the white um, what is it called um, base the gesso and I feel like it would maybe ruin that and so the primer the primed uh, paint that's the only thing I think it would ruin. I don't think it, it has nothing to do with 
with the inks because the inks are not they're solvent ink they're not i mean they're not alcohol ink so um you could use acrylic you can use stress you can use paint and it won't come off anyways i use that little thing and that's how i was able to attach it to the center because you have such a big gap in the middle that it gives you that perfect flexibility to do that anyways i'm gonna give you guys another tip i grab this foam to make um screw heads and what i do is i use my hole punch and then I just kind of indent the back of my knife a little X or a little line to make kind of like screw heads. Then when I then I'll later grab a you can just grab acrylic paint. But if you have waxes or uh, other things, you can um, use that as well. For me, it's just easy for me to reach in because my paints are right next to me. Just easier for me to reach over and with my finger just grab a little bit of paint and kind of dry brush it into or dry finger paint on the on these little screw heads um in this case i grabbed this antique metal paint and look see how it looks it looks like a screw yay but oh, it's not the price of the screw now this one i uh, because i'm too focused on the camera i didn't notice i had grabbed a blob of paint and i totally messed that up but i wiped it off and i kind of screwed it back in and this is the end result. I hope you guys enjoy this video. I hope you guys like it. I'm planning on putting my signature um, label back there, my maker's label out of aluminum. Um, as you guys remember, there's a video for that. But I'm planning to put that there. I made these, um, these are real ferns. I have a collection. I'm going to say large collection, but there's a million of ferns out there. So I have a... Um, about have like 20 different kinds of ferns so these are all actual collections of a collector of ferns and these are dry leaves for them from all the ferns so there's i think in this selection there's eight cards but two cards or maybe three cards have two different kinds of ferns they're cousins to each other so that's why i put them in the same card and these are all just the papers and they're different kinds of paper this is a piano pocket that i told you guys i was going to make I put some cameras in front of around. And what, this is what I do with the little things. I made a little book, people. So I, I put it in this uh, center little thing. You guys saw how I can just uh, take it apart and put it in there. And this one, I use one of those baseball pocket card thingies. And I put it there and I stapled it on the side that I had some leftovers. You guys will see what I did with the, with the other ones first. And so in here, I grabbed... The, the little pocket, um, what is it called? The card folders, and I did this. I grabbed two, I cut out of the sheet, I cut two, and I made some of uh, um, specimen little cards, but these are mushrooms, because remember the book is mushrooms and ferns? I don't have real mushroom collections, so <laughs> I put stickers. That'd be cool though. Maybe my husband loves, loves the mushrooms, um, but you know, I think there's some poisonous and dangerous ones. And, I don't think they're like the hardest thing to grow but here you guys go i hope you enjoyed it thank you guys for watching thank you guys for coming by and if you like this video please consider giving it a thumbs up and subscribing to my channel if you haven't done so yet thank you guys for watching like i said and uh stay safe guys bye